Hi, and welcome back. Warning, this is a low-effort video with no examples or bespoke music. Sorry, I'll try harder next time. Anyway, I got an email from a viewer who signs his name Hubie. It's rather long, I won't read it all. Let's just sum it up as 96 kilohertz is still better, right? The summary of my perhaps slightly controversial answer is it doesn't matter. Let's try a thought experiment. You somehow manage to sync up and slave two parallel DAWs and you track the same session twice. Your signals are all split after the preamps and hit two identical interfaces, one clocked at 44.1 and the other at 96k. You then go ahead and mix that session and your two doors remain synced with the same plugins and the same settings on both, the only difference being the project sample rate. Let's also assume that all the plugins you use are well behaved, free of bugs, and don't fundamentally change their behaviour at different sample rates. So, no cramping EQs, for example. And final assumption, all non-linear plugins have good quality linear phase oversampling available, and you correctly turn that on for every instance that needs it. You see why this is a thought experiment. Actually running this test in practice wouldn't be easy. Anyway, my expectation is that the difference between your final mixes would be somewhere between negligible and inaudible. And assuming there is in fact an audible difference that you can reliably still hear blind, I think it's more likely that the better mix will be the one you are listening to while making the decisions, and not necessarily the one with the higher sample rate. It's my expectation that a half dB gain difference or semitone frequency difference on any one EQ on any channel will have a more significant impact on the sound of the mix than the different project sample rate. It's possible that one day someone will actually do that test and prove me wrong, but they would need to work quite hard to demonstrate that they'd done the test properly, especially excluding differences in the way any of the plugins behave at different sample rates, before I would accept the results. The fact is, Recording and mixing at any of the standard sample rates is perfectly good enough from a technical perspective. The fidelity is far higher than any tape recorder ever managed. The fact is, once you've achieved a certain minimum standard in terms of fidelity, it ceases to really matter. All that matters then are the choices you make when mixing, which frequencies to boost, which to cut, what kind of compression and how much, what kind of reverb, and so on. It's much the same with guitars. I've no intention of ever parting with my Gibson, but you don't need a Gibson to sound good. If the intonation is good, and the action is playable, and the pickups don't suck, then all that matters at that point are the notes you choose to play. I also own several much cheaper guitars. In the context of a mix, no one knows or cares if that Telecaster bridge pickup is on a Fender custom shop, or on my Squire classic vibe. Am I playing something cool on it, is the only question. So that's why I still track and mix at 48k, even though my new computer would probably be just as happy at 96k, I don't think it matters. If you've got a system that can handle the higher rates without holding you back at all, and if it makes you feel better, by all means work at 96k if you want. Just don't expect everything to immediately sound better, you're still going to have to work just as hard on the mix. Final point, I often see people recommending higher sample rates for pitch shifting, time stretching, or very speed situations. Obviously, if you're slowing down audio, or pitch shifting it down, it might be beneficial to preserve higher frequencies, which will then become audible after processing. It's perhaps not as important as you think, however. Many, perhaps most, real-world sounds have very little content above 20 kHz anyway. It's not automatically obvious that your pitch-shifted sound will need to have content in the upper octaves. A part could have nothing above 5 kHz, having been shifted down two octaves, and yet still seem bright if there's a lot of that 5k region. And of course it's possible to synthesise higher harmonics with distortion or saturation. In fact, this might even be preferable to the original high-frequency content of the part, which may be little more than noise. When it comes to stretching, however, I'm rather sceptical. 
It seems intuitively obvious that having more frequent sample points will allow for more accurate time stretching, but it's important to remember that higher sample rates only give us extra bandwidth. There's no increase in resolution for content below Nyquist. This is counterintuitive, but if it wasn't true, digital audio wouldn't work at all. Maybe one day I'll devise a proper test and settle the debate. But meanwhile, I'm assuming that this is a myth. Higher sample rates do not result in better quality time stretching, in my provisional opinion. I would suggest that, if you want to avoid artefacts from time stretching, a better solution would be to track the part in time in the first place. Lol. Before I go, I feel like, having opened that Pandora's box, I need to give you a health update. I finally got to the front of the queue and spoke to a consultant. I waited over a year for my appointment, which sucked, especially as I waited too long before seeking help in the first place. For my American viewers, no, that's not because we have socialised healthcare. It's because we've had 14 years of Conservative government. The first time I had such a referral was under a Labour government, and I didn't have to wait at all. And I should note, I'm now receiving excellent care, and it isn't costing me a penny, apart from the usual taxes. Anyway, I've had a load of tests, cameras poked where God never intended, and the verdict is in. Yes, it's the Crohn's disease. Yes, my insides are in a bad way. Yes, it definitely needs treatment. I start on some new medication in a week or two. Apparently it's supposed to be very effective. Fingers crossed. The bad news is, ever since I was told how severely inflamed my intestines are, I've felt like absolute shit. It's like I suddenly got permission to feel unwell, and the floodgates opened. So I'm taking it easy at the moment, hence the low-effort video. Thank you for all the messages of support and expressions of concern. I know the conventional wisdom says that reading your comments section is bad for your mental health, but it's quite the reverse in my case. Your comments are positive, witty, well-informed. I hardly get any trolls at all. The quality of the audience I've built is something I feel very proud of. Give yourselves a round of applause. That's all. Thanks for watching.